So my name is Fraser Kerry. I'm the team principal. So that role sees me responsible for both sort of the technical and the and the non-technical within our team. In this presentation, I'll give uh, a, some background on our team and uh, give a, a, an overview of the competition that we attend at Silverstone each year. Uh, as mentioned before, with me on this call is Callum Wilson. He's our head engineer. So he's responsible for the uh, combustion, electric and driverless vehicles, the design and manufacture of those vehicles. Uh, those are our three major projects. And you'll hear from him later on uh, with an update too. And finally, later on in the presentation, you'll hear from Sorsha Hill, our head of operations. Uh, so she's responsible and oversees our sort of HR, IT, marketing, sub teams and the like. So just to kick things off with our sort of high level overview of what, what do we as a team, what do we as UG Racing do? Well, we exist to take a, a car to Silverstone to compete at the annual Formula Student Competition. It's a, a popular global competition, in fact, that attract, attracts teams uh, from all over the world. The aim here is to, in a single year, each year, design, build and compete with what's typically a single seat race car. Uh, although we're seeing recent, more recently driverless teams come through and you'll hear more on that later too. So that's the goal here. Uh, you can there's sort of fantastic opportunities uh, as a student to take part in this project. Uh, you get to gain the experience of working in an industry styled company. Um, there's plenty of exposure to different career opportunities as we work with lots of external partners um, and good exposure there. And of course, you're, you're developing skills to sort of complement your degree. Typically, you know, in your degree programs, there's opportunities for uh, teamwork projects and you're sort of learning the theory. And then we see ourselves as a good opportunity for students to take that theory and apply it um, to sort of real world projects. So that's that's what we do and kind of some of the benefits we can bring to, to students. Uh, just to sort of set the scene and give a very rough annual timeline, we have to bring a new car to the competition each year. So this sort of cycle repeats uh, annually. Around August time, once we come back from competition, it's just as university starting, we'll lay out the concept, we'll budget for what we, we want to be able to achieve in that year and sort of plan for the coming year. Semester one of university, so from September to December, that's where most of the bulk of the design work vehicle gets done. Uh, and we welcome any new partners on board there, although that's sort of ongoing throughout the year. January, so just sort of in the in the last few weeks, we've started the manufacture of our vehicle and we prepare for the various events at the competition, which I'll, I'll touch on in just a few minutes. This takes us, the manufacture period takes us right up until about May, at which point we'll launch the car with its shiny new livery and uh, we'll take it testing at a track just an hour south uh, of Glasgow at Cames in Ayrshire. That's our testing location. So we'll test for the month of June before taking the car, packing it up and taking it to Silverstone. Uh, to compete against all these teams from across the UK and the world. So that's the sort of annual timeline there. Uh, and just to give some sort of fast facts about the team and the car, uh, these are the popular ones. The car could, in a straight line, do around 70 miles an hour, there thereabouts. It weighs in at just over 200 kilos, producing about 70 brake horsepower. So quite a, um, quite a machine. It's very fast off the line because it doesn't weigh a lot. You can accelerate quite quickly. Uh, in terms of the history of the actual team, it was formed in around 2008. We produced our first car in 2012, and you'll see from the results there from recent competitions, uh, of, there wasn't one in 2020 because of the pandemic, but you'll see the results are trending upwards, you know, as we're sort of learning from that experience, uh, growing as a team and diversifying, uh, we're finding success there. So improved results coming with that. So I suppose, who are UG Racing? Who's in the team? You'll see on the left-hand side of your screen there, a sort of breakdown of the, the management structure. So you hopefully recognize my face, Calm's face, sort of too. Uh, we've got deputies and sort of heads of electric and driverless vehicle development too. It's worth pointing out, that this is the sort of management structure because below this group of people, there's another group of team heads who manage the individual sub teams consisting of up to sort of 12 to 15 team members. So we are a sizable team, up to around 160 now, uh, with a rough breakdown of about two thirds of us being engineers and sort of on the on the technical sub teams, and a third of us being on the operations sub teams. That sort of sources area of responsibility. And in terms of you know who makes up the team and the representation, uh, we're sitting at around about 
a third, so 35% of our team uh, are female, which is which is great to see. Obviously, looking to improve that number all the time. We see um, in team management in particular around a, a quarter of that, and um, so that's a good figure. But again, could be improved. We're a, a very diverse team in terms of nationalities. Over 30 nationalities are represented in EG Racing in many languages um, that's spoken. So a very diverse team, but we're seeing great, you know, success from that. Learn learning from each other and building on each other's strengths. So that's a sort of whistle stop tour of what UGR is, who we are and, and what we're trying to do. So I mentioned that we exist to take a car to the competition. So I'll now sort of spend the next five minutes giving a rundown of the, the events that we compete in at competition because it's made up of different events. It's held at Silverstone over four days in, in July, right? That is usually the weekend after the British Grand Prix. So in terms of the events, we've got they break them down into dynamic events where the car is running, the car is involved. So you can see there the likes of acceleration and sprint events. Uh, but it's not just a build a fast car and the fastest wins type competition. There's also these static events. So that's where the car isn't involved. It's up to the engineers, for example, to present their designs to judges and be questioned by judges. Uh, there's a business event too. So it's sort of a Dragon's Den style presentation and a communications award as well. So there's, you know, all these, you have to build up all these other skills as well to bring a sort of very complete um, entry to the competition. So just to go into these events in a bit more detail and kind of give, um, I've got some videos to show you, for example, of the car in action uh, to put some, some context to it. So we've got here the acceleration event, which is the uh, quickest to cover 75 meters. That's quite straightforward. You can see in 2021, so the most recent competition, we finished third in this event, so onto the podium, which is great to see. We've never done that before. Uh, car number 52, you can see in the left there. We Next up, we have the skid pad too. So that's uh, essentially a figure of eight. Uh, fastest round the figure of eight uh, wins. Uh, you can see we were just shy of the podium this last year, coming in at fourth. But again, our best ever result. We also have a sprint event. So that's the quickest to do a lap of the track that you can see highlighted in red on the right hand side of your screen. Now that's the actual track itself. You can see quite quite technical, lots of corners, not too many straights where you just put your foot down and go. It's quite a technical track. And, and we came third there. So that was great to see where we were onto the podium. And find, uh, oh, and sorry, we have here just a very short video. I'm, of the a lap of the sprint uh, event itself. You should be able to hear the commentary here, but if not, we can see if we can get that working. So there we go. That just sort of gives you a flavour of what the car is capable of and, and how it looks on track. The next slide and the final dynamic event where the car is involved is what's known as the endurance event. So that's 22 laps of that same track. And so you're covering 22 kilometres in total. And this is the sort of main event, the, the Grand Prix, if you like. All the teams want to do well in this event. Uh, so it, it's tough. It's tough to do that 22 kilometres. Uh, there's a million and one things Problem, potential problems could crop up. Uh, unfortunately, one of those did catch us out at this last competition. It was a, an electrical sort of fault. So we, we didn't finish the event there. And as a result, didn't collect the points in that event. So unfortunate, but learning from these sort of mistakes is everything for a student is about. We're only in the position we are today because we've learned from the mistakes from previous teams in 2017, 18. Um, so we're always looking to build on building those experiences. So that uh, sort of sums up the dynamic event where the car is running. Uh, I'll quickly go over the static events. Uh, again, just the idea here is that it's all about building up different skills. So, for example, in the design event, uh, the sort of senior engineers will be forced to defend their design decision making to uh, judges. Judges typically being uh, professionals with years of experience in industry, volunteering, giving up their free time to come to the competition and judge you know, students on, on their designs. So. 
so this is a great event. It really makes you think and make sure you know, throughout the year, we're always trying to make sure that the decisions we're making are well justified so that we do well in this event. There's also a, what's called the cost and manufacturing event. The aim being here to give justification to the decisions that we've made, not only with regards to design, as in we haven't done something because just because it's the lightest or the fastest, we might also choose to do something because it's because it's cheap, because we're saving the team money or because we're using alternative and um, sustainable materials, for example, and you'd be rewarded for that um, at the competition. So, you know, it's there's a lot of factors here um, that teams are encouraged to take into account. So so we've typically we're looking to improve on our performance in this cost event and confident of doing so this year. And finally, I mentioned there was a Dragon's Den style presentation, what's known as the business plan present business presentation plan uh, you can see here entries from our last competition the idea is that uh, the team will go away create a brand totally unconnected from UG racing uh, come up with a, a business proposal and sort of how we'd market it how we'd actually manufacture it looking for an investment um, in return for a stake in the company type of thing so it's essentially uh, and we've seen success here the team's finished on the podium before so looking for another strong performance in this event um, in the in summer at our competition in July. Of course, I, I mentioned that we have a driverless sort of division, a driverless project too. Uh, and I thought it'd be worthwhile just playing a quick video on uh, of the driverless car in, in action. So Calm will explain this a bit further, but the idea here is that the, the IMECI who organized the competition, they loan out these cars. So we don't uh, manufacture, we don't own the driverless vehicle. Instead, we've got a team of software developers and physicists and engineers who are coming up with the code essentially to, to plug in to the driverless vehicle, if you like, uh, and then see who can get the car going around the track fastest at competition. So, so this is a, a video of, I believe it's the Coventry University team, their driverless car in action. You can see it's not, you know, breakneck speeds, but uh, still impressive when you think that there's there's no remote controls here that that car's you know registering the cones uh, and act, acting on that that information that it's seen so that's Coventry in action uh, I think next up we've got a video of uh UG Racing so this was um like I mentioned the IMEC's car we're borrowing the car but it's our software that's running on this car and um, off a bit quicker off the mark and um, slightly strays outside the the bounds of the track but but it does come come back inside and corrects its course um, at, at a decent speed. So that gives an idea of sort of the, the driverless context, uh, the driverless event. I'll now hand you over to Colin Wilson, our head engineer, and he can give a bit of an update on the, the technical side, the design and, and manufacture. Over to you, Colin. Yes, yeah, so let's just let him give a quick run through. So first of all, our 2022 goal for the year. So. UG Racing, as a team, last year we developed an electric vehicle concept whilst taking our 2020 combustion vehicle to the 21 competition, refining the design slightly and manufacturing that, as well as our first ever driverless entry last year in July. This year we plan on delivering three unit vehicles with the two of these, the combustion and the driverless entry, entering competition and the electric being a proof of our concept developed last year um, and sort of gaining an understanding of so aspects of safety, design, um, and sorry, sorting out all the forms and documents required for the competition for a full electric entry next year. So a quick breakdown, the combustion vehicle this year is a fully new UGR22 uh, steel space frame chassis. It incorporates our Honda CBR600 motorcycle engine. We've optimized this engine for former student use. Um, so bringing the power band down and, and leveling it out from the, the standard standard engine. Um, it is a far more refined, refined version of the car we took to competition last year. Um, a lot of improvements in the driving environment, the aerodynamics package, and reducing the overall mass to hopefully just below 200 kilos. The electric vehicle, this will be the first ever electric vehicle we manufacture. Um, we're taking the UGR19 chassis um, unsprung and components, reusing these, upcycling them, checking them over for structural integrity, and implementing an electric powertrain into this. So. Part of the competition is we design and manufacture our own 400 volt accumulator. Um, we also then buy in components like the inverter and the motor, which 
to be coming soon, um, and then implement these into the car. This vehicle will then provide a platform, not only for the knowledge for the next electric vehicle, but a platform to build the driverless vehicle upon. So our driverless, this en this, the driverless entry this year, again, is the iMechE's own ADS DDT car. So again, as Fraser said, we turn up, we take our software, which we spent the whole past year developing from last year's comp competition, learning from the mistakes, building test platforms, um, where we can sort of run around the car park with cones laid out and gather more and more data. Um, and then implement this on the iMechE's very own car at Silverstone in July. The plan then from there would be to convert this driverless, this electric vehicle this year into a fully built driverless car for the team in the future coming years. So that's the next big push um, in that development. So a quick breakdown of the sort of design and manufacture process here at UG Racing. Um, as Fraser said, every year we design a new car, sometimes one, two cars. Um, this year, past year, we've been designing two alongside each other, as well as the driverless software. Um, moving on, we hope back to go to go back to just one car and, and driverless from there. But so we we do this using tools and practice all of the time, not taught in the degree programs. So we run our design reviews internally and externally. So internally, the team all gets together, the team heads, the management team reviews all the designs and make sure everything is progressing as expected. And then the external design reviews, we sort of introduce senior lecturers from the university. They take time and they're into their free time to come and help us and people from industry as well. We've had recently had some driverless ones with um, Thales. So um, getting their advice um, and help and sort of steering us in the right direction there. And then a final design review before the competition where we basically go through everything, make sure the justification is right. Um, and make sure we're ready for, for going. We use a, a large variety of software packages, so of Star CCM, GT for the engine optimization, SolidWorks Autodesk, a lot of MATLAB. Um, and we also require to keep a lot of documentation. There's a lot of turnover in the in the university, in our team, um, with you know people coming and going. Some people only design parts for one year. So making sure that the forum's kept up to date and people can basically pick up where someone has left off before. This is key with you know, people not being in the in the role for very long. So typically, our sort of a part design process follows sort of initial concept, previous design analysis. This usually takes place quite early on in the semester, alongside the sort of CAD schematic modeling of designs. We then do quite a lot of FEA, CFD, shape optimization using um, likes of Abacus, Star CCM. Fusion as well. Um, and we have a lot of purpose but, but written MATLAB scripts which we develop on every year for the likes of our lap time simulators and stuff. So, yeah, so we have a lot of lap time simulations as well for, for, to optimize our suspension design and weight distributions. And as well as that, we use our lap time simulator to develop our driverless code um, before we come to competition. We do quite a lot of rapid prototyping in the team. And we've got a few team members of 3D printers. And alongside the project this year, we're doing the art school a lot of like steering wheel development from, from years gone by. And then leading on to sort of engineering drawings um, that can be sent away to manufacturers, to costing um, and manufacturing reports for the drawings, and then a final design report at the end of the year, summarizing the whole year's work. In UG Racing, we do pride ourselves in giving our team members hands-on experience. This is one of the key features of forming a student is getting young team members and people in the university degrees down into the workshop and seeing how they can take their designs and CADs and their, even their designs on paper and actually put them into practice and, and sort of work out what works, what doesn't, and, and let them see a different side of engineering than we do see in, in most of our degree. From a mechanical side, we manufacture our own steel space frame suspension components, a lot of key metalworking, and making tabs, making test pieces um, to smash for destructive testing. We also build our engine in-house and we got off, you know, we buy the parts in and then do our own tuning and with the help of some external sponsors. Then leading on to the assembly of fuel car components, making you know people to understand how assemblies go together, how you know components can be attached to press fits and spacers and, and all of that. And then leading on to sort of the design and implementation of homemade jigs, testing rigs for destructive testing, torsional testing, and, and the likes of that. 
We then have our composite manufacturer. So composite manufacturing, as we find through doing more and more with the, the chassis, developing a monocoque concept last year um, and sort of pushing our aerodynamics package since 2019, we found there's quite a lot of composite manufacturing experience lacking in Scotland. It's an area where you know, Scotland could do to, to build upon. Um, and, and with the introduction of our front and rear wings, diffusers, side aero, um, and even refinement of our nose cone and body panel designs, we've been sort of experimenting with new composite manufacturing techniques, trying to do things with you know, builds up of carbon and plastic, and, and giving people in the team an experience of you know, mold making, allowing members to manufacture and prepare the molds, lay up the actual composite materials themselves, and then fit the final component to the car. So. It's quite a quite a nice grounding experience to see people, you know, take their full aerodynamics package, optimize and CFD and then action manufacturing. Um, and we're beginning to expand that use um, with the introduction of carbon fiber drive shafts and various carbon suspension components integrated into this, this year's entry. Finally, we have our electrical manufacturing. So as we have for many years, the manufacture of our full car wiring loom and data logging system is entirely in-house. We The only thing, the only real standard parts we use are the actual engine parts and the, EC, the ECU that we buy in. The rest is fully in-house designed and moving on to the electric vehicle that carries on again. All of the electric onboard electronic um, computers and stuff will all be designed in-house. This follows generally test boards, jig manufacture alongside a lot of PCB component assembly. We've also recently began the, the small scale manufacture of some components for a high voltage accumulator, leading on to then it being assembled from over 700 individual lithium ion cells and a sort of purpose built battery management system to work alongside this. As well as doing a lot of manufacturing in house, we also outsource all of our manufacturing. We have a large range of manufacturing sponsors, which you can see in the bottom right of this slide, that we really could not build this car without. Um, the likes of yeah, Heiko and Forest Precision, GNM, Tanlin, uh, Castle are big machining sponsors for CNC, a lot of CNC machining, gear cutting, and then Graphite, Midton, a lot of 3D printing there. Graphite is one of the leading the UK um, graphite 3D printing companies. Um, and then, yeah, you're engineering for a lot of the CNC bending of our tubes um, for the chassis. So you can see a large range of sort of the products that we take right through design and CAD and make proper engineering drawings that are then carried over into this, giving a, you know, a lot of the team members experience of building, of actually getting their parts made by a manufacturer. As far as testing is concerned, we use testing for sort of two main purposes. A lot of it for design analysis. So tomorrow, two of our members will go down to Cranfield, um, part of the university. They've got a testing facility for impact attenuators. So there's been a couple of people designing this all year, so they'll go down and, and do some destructive testing of those. As well as that, we have sort of chassis torsional stiffness testing, carbon components, a lot of electrical cell discharge testing over and over to validate our design decisions. Um, and then recently developing our lap time simulator software to analyze the sort of designs earlier on in the design process. For dynamic testing, we take our engine, obviously, to SciTech Racing for dyno, a lot of aerodynamic validation, simulate competition runs at CAMES, as far as I said, um, and a lot of driverless track simulation before we actually go to competition. Recently, this year, we've started our development of a purpose-built former student sim racer. So taking the UGR21 chassis and recycling this with sort of old computer, computer monitors of the team, PC and an old wheel and pedal box. We look to develop this for a lot of driver training ahead of competition, but as well as that, eventually implement our pedal box steering wheel seat designs um, to sort of test these before we actually get the car built. So we'll be able to put, put these designs in early on in the season um, and, and, and validate more of the decisions that way as well. So just a little update on our three entries, well, two entries in our electric vehicle this year. Um, for our combustion vehicle, you can see the car there on the right-hand side. Our design stage ends on Monday, so all of the designs for the vehicle will be complete um, and then fully on the way with manufacture. So the manufacture is under the way, underway for the chassis and the aerodynamics packages. The engine build as well is nearing completion. Um, a lot of our components are sent off to our manufacturing sponsors now, so we'll be waiting for them part 
back at the sort of mid to the end of it, March. Our livery design is progressing well ahead of our June launch. Um, I was told not to put a photo of that on the slide, so there's no, there's no sneak peeks allowed. And we are fully focused on our competition static event preparation. This year, bringing in former team members and some lecturers and sort of people from industry to review us and give us a real good grilling before we take our design to competition. So we're ready for the design judges there. As far as the electric vehicle is concerned, we took the decision earlier in the year not to enter this in Silverstone to sort of take more time to focus on the safety and the implementation of the vehicle um, and, the, and focus on the combustion vehicle competition side. Um, recently, the team, well, back at the end of 2021, the team was six members of the team were trained electrically through GTG. Um, the final design reviews for the whole design are coming up with the major components for the EV powertrain ordered and should be arriving between now and April. We've been working closely alongside the School of Engineering and Safety Services, working with those to sort of develop and improve our, our methods there and some external input from like CDM Plus to sort of oversee what we're doing is, is correct and on the right track. But we are well on track to bringing a finished electric vehicle to the track in the sort of July, July time. And last but definitely not least, a quick driverless update. So we're very much in the code and development stage. The driverless vehicle will be coming up to Edinburgh for us and Edinburgh to test our code on. And um, so that should be happening in the next few weeks, which is a, a huge advancement on last year. We finished fourth overall, overall in the UK in our debut competition, having never seen the driverless car before arriving. And um, so this year getting some prior testing and, and nailing, you know, ironing out any issues that we have will be key. We've had some, like, some great contributions from, from new partners, Velodyne Sensors from Mapex, GPS from FPG, and recently an in-car PC um, from Talos, who we're now working closely with to develop our driverless platform, um, which aligns well with the progress they're making on their side. Yeah, I think that's all for me. I'll pass on to Sorsha. Hello, yes, uh, thanks, Calm. So, yeah, I'm Sorsha Hill. I'm Head of Operations for UG Racing. Um, our operations team consists of IT, partnerships, human resources, and marketing and media. Uh, so we work alongside the engineering and driverless teams to support our entries to the former student competition. I'll just give a quick overview of each one. Uh, so starting with human resources, part of the primary focus of the HR and logistics team is recruitment. Um, they play an important role in diversifying the team. Uh, as Fraser mentioned earlier, 35% uh, of the team identifies female, and this is an incre increase of 5% from 2020. Um, one of the main things of recruitment is that we obviously advertise to the team, uh, advertise to the university. Um, so from two, over 200 applications, we welcomed 92 new team members to bring the team to a total headcount of 160, which is a record for us. Um, Team members are primarily from the School of Engineering. However, we have students from a range of subject areas, including business, law, computer science, medicine, and modern languages. And that's only naming a few, there's far more. Um, the HR team is also responsible for outreach. So they will also work with, to establish strong connections with our charity part partners, such as Anthony Nolan, F1 Schools, and the Glasgow Science Centre. Uh, this is to raise awareness and use our platforms to, to promote our partners as well. And finally, the HR team plays a key role in coordinating our trip to Silverson for the former student competition in July. Um, so this year we'll be taking 70 of our team members to Silverson after successfully coordinating a COVID secure group of 45 last year. Uh, moving on to our marketing and media team. Uh, they're responsible for most for promoting the team to students, potential sponsors, and the general public. Um, they've been highly successful at this, winning the student former student communications award for two years in a row. And this has been achieved through high engagement through our social media platforms, including particular success for our partner fo focused content, creating regular long form content detail in our work, and providing a behind the scenes view of what building former student cars are like. Um, so we've used our platforms to showcase our work and our partners' work, and it's great to see the follower counts and engagement increasing throughout the year. 
In a similar vein, our partnerships team are responsible for reaching out to potential new partners, maintaining relationships with our current and continuing partners, and spreading awareness of our, product, of our project. So we have a range of partners who provide us with financial and manufacturing support, and which is highly appreciated, um, as this is crucial for achieving our goals and providing our team members with fantastic opportunities. Finally, our operations teams have been keeping track of our alumni over the last few years. So we're very proud that many of our alumni have gone to work, gone on to work in the engineering industry and beyond. Um, this is just some of the companies that our, our alumni have gone to work for. Um, if you look closely in the background of the slide, you'll see three of our former team members who are now working at Williams Racing. So two of them are engineers and one is a press officer for Williams now. So we're, we're very proud of them. And it's great to see the opportunities that EG Racing has for our, for our team members. So I'll pass you back to Fraser for an overview of a bit more of how that works. Uh, yes, thank you, Sasha. This this is the last slide we have. I, I just wanted to sort of follow up on the point of, of opportunities. Um, you can see a lot of different images here of, of our team and the, and the car, but I, th I think it's really the team that's important here because everything that we presented to you today, that's all been driven by the sort of initiative of our team. It's This is an entirely extracurricular project, so we do it sort of after, well, 24 seven, but you know, after five o'clock on the weekends, totally extracurricular uh, and everything you see, I've seen today has kind of been off, off our own back. So it, you can get as much out of this project as, as you put in. And we've, you know, I think myself, Calm and Sorcerer would count ourselves very fortunate to have such a, an engaged and enthusiastic team as we do all 160 team members contribute um, in, in some way to the success of the project and we enjoy that success together. So that's all I really wanted to highlight with this last slide here. I, you can find out more about uh, our team and the projects at, on our website or Facebook, UG Racing. Uh, and, and with that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, of course, to the Hummerman for the invitation. It's, it is a real pleasure to be able to share the work that we do each year. And of course, your contribution well, without it, we wouldn't be where we are. It's been an incredibly valued partner. So, so thank you for the support.